Hello guys and welcome to my channel. In this video we are talking about how dangerous will the coming recession be? Before we continue our video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting videos. As central banks across the world simultaneously hike interest rates in response to inflation, the world may be edging toward a global recession in 2023 and a string of financial crises in emerging market and developing economies that would do them lasting harm, according to a comprehensive new study by the World Bank. Central banks around the world have been raising interest rates this year with a degree of synchronicity not seen over the past five decades, a trend that is likely to continue well into next year, according to the report. Yet the currently expected trajectory of interest rate increases and other policy actions may not be sufficient to bring global inflation back down to levels seen before the pandemic. Investors expect central banks to raise global monetary policy rates to almost 4% through 2023, an increase of more than 2 percentage points over the 2021 average. Unless supply disruptions and labor market pressures subside, those interest rate increases could leave the global core inflation rate, excluding energy, at about 5% in 2023, nearly double the five-year average before the pandemic, the study finds. To cut global inflation to a rate consistent with their targets, central banks may need to raise interest rates by an additional two percentage points, according to the report's model. If this were accompanied by financial market stress, global GDP growth would slow to 0.5% in 2023, a 0.4% contraction in per capita terms that would meet the technical definition of a global recession. Global growth is slowing sharply, with further slowing likely as more countries fall into recession. My deep concern is that these trends will persist, with long-lasting consequences that are devastating for people in emerging market and developing economies," said World Bank Group President David Malpass. To achieve low inflation rates, currency stability, and faster growth, policymakers could shift their focus from reducing consumption to boosting production. Policy should seek to generate additional investment and improve productivity and capital allocation, which are critical for growth and poverty reduction. The study highlights the unusually fraught circumstances under which central banks are fighting inflation today. Several historical indicators of global recessions are already flashing warnings. The global economy is now in its steepest slowdown following a post-recession recovery since 1970. Global consumer confidence has already suffered a much sharper decline than in the run-up to previous global recessions. The world's three largest economies, the United States, China, and the Euro area, have been slowing sharply. Under the circumstances, even a moderate hit to the global economy over the next year could tip it into recession. The study relies on insights from previous global recessions to analyze the recent evolution of economic activity and presents scenarios for 2022 to 24. A slowdown, such that the one now underway, typically calls for counter-cyclical policy to support activity. However, the threat of inflation and limited fiscal space are spurring policymakers in many countries to withdraw policy support even as the global economy slows sharply. The experience of the 1970s, the policy responses to the 1975 global recession, the subsequent period of stagflation, and the global recession of 1982 illustrate the risk of allowing inflation to remain elevated for long, while growth is weak. The 1982 global recession coincided with the second lowest growth rate in developing economies over the past five decades, second only to 2020. It triggered more than 40 debt crises and was followed by a decade of lost growth in many developing economies. Recent tightening of monetary and fiscal policies will likely prove helpful in reducing inflation, said Ahen Coase, the World Bank's acting vice president for equitable growth, finance, and institutions. But because they are highly synchronous across countries, they could be mutually compounding in tightening financial conditions and steepening the global growth slowdown. Policymakers in emerging market and developing economies need to stand ready to manage the potential spillovers from globally synchronous tightening of policies. While the war in Ukraine, China's draconian pandemic policies, and runaway inflation are all clouding the economic outlook, 
investors are particularly concerned about the prospect of the United States Federal Reserve raising interest rates so aggressively that the world's largest economy tips into recession, taking much of the rest of the world with it. Historically, the U.S. and other central banks have found it difficult to manage the task of raising rates, which raises the cost of borrowing and investment for businesses and households, without dealing a severe blow to economic growth. Past recessions, which are usually defined as two consecutive quarters of negative growth, have been blamed on the Fed's efforts to cool high inflation, including back-to-back -back downturns in the early 1980s. For the U.S., if inflation does not show signs of cooling in the last few months of 2022, and measures of inflation expectations start to climb, it would force the Federal Reserve to continue with aggressive rate hikes beyond 2022 into the spring of 2023. In my opinion, that's when the economy will tip into a recession. Pao Lin Tien, an assistant professor of economics at George Washington University. I think a similar situation would apply to other countries as well. If central banks are forced to increase rates aggressively and persistently, either to defend their currency or to tame inflation, then a recession is inevitable. That's all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed our video. For more videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.